Hello and welcome to this episode of Heart and Health. In this episode of Heart and Health, we'll be talking about chest pain, uh, which is most common reason for most of the patients reaching to the cardiology OPD. In our previous episode, we had talked about heart attack, the basics of it, and how does it present, how do we diagnose it. And I've been asked on various platforms how to identify the chest pain the patient is having is cardiac in origin or not. This confusion is not without any reason. There are multiple organs which are present in the area surrounding the heart and pain arising from any of these can mimic cardiac origin chest pain. So first rule is there is no single feature in the chest pain which is absolutely diagnostic of coronary artery disease. We usually classify the patients having chest pain into two categories. One is the cardiac origin chest pain, one is the non-cardiac chest pain. Cardiac origin chest pain is usually central in location. It may be present on the left side of the chest. There may be radiation to the left arm. This is because the arm and the heart are supplied by the similar type of nerves. And uh, the non-cardiac chest pain is usually well localized. The patient is usually able to pinpoint the location of it. The cardiac origin chest pain is usually described by the patient as a sensation of heaviness, squeezing, choking, or sometimes burning also. The non-cardiac chest pain may be burning in nature, or it may be sharp stabbing in nature, or cutting in nature. The duration of pain is of paramount importance. Any pain which does not last for a minute is unlikely cardiac. Cardiac pains do not usually last for a few seconds. Cardiac pain, that is pain because of the underlying coronary artery disease, usually lasts for minutes to hours. Whereas the non-cardiac chest pain may be fluctuating in intensity. They may last for a few seconds. They may be constantly present. They may be persistent throughout the day. The cardiac chest pain increases after effort, after emotions and after exposure to cold. Any person who complains of increase in the chest pain while lying down is probably having non-cardiac chest pain that is pain not due to underlying coronary artery disease. Similarly, if any person complains that his chest pain increases on inspiration is having pain because of some non-cardiac etiology. Cardiac origin chest pain or pain due to underlying coronary artery disease is usually relieved by rest or sublingual nitroglycerin tablets or sprays. Various types of angina have been described in the literature. One is chronic stable angina. Chronic, in the chronic stable angina, patient usually has chest pain after exertion or exposure to cold or after emotions. And uh, this pain usually lasts for around three to five minutes. Rarely it lasts for more than 15 minutes and it easily subsides after a rest or something called night rates. There is another entity known as unstable angina. Unstable angina is either the presence of rest angina that is patient has classic chest pain arising from the heart and it is present at rest or patient has progressive worsening of chronic stable angina the patient was previously having. Unstable angina is usually indicative of non-occlusive coronary artery blockages. Usually total occlusion leads to a heart attack. This is subtotal occlusion of the coronary arteries, which is responsible for symptoms at rest. At times we get to meet the patients who describe that they have chest pain while uh, they start walking and the pain gradually subsides as they keep walking. This is a type of angina. This is known as walkthrough angina. In this exertional chest pain may present at the beginning of the exercise. As the patient exercises, pain decreases in intensity and may even wane off. There's nothing reassuring about walkthrough angina. It is a type of angina and uh, the person who's having it needs evaluation for it. There is an entity known as nocturnal angina. In nocturnal angina, patients experience chest pain one to two hours after sleeping or during early morning. Then we come to some confusing entities, uh, postprandial angina. Usually the patients with peptic ulcer disease have a chest pain or retrosternal pain or pain in the epigastric or the upper abdominal region, which may increase after the food intake. In postprandial angina, within 30 minutes of food intake, patient experiences chest pain. This is usually indicative of severe blockages in the coronary arteries or the blockage in the left's main coronary artery. What happens is blood which was previously slipping the coronary arteries is diverted to the bowels after the food intake and the patient experience is angina. Now about the site of the pain. I've talked about this previously also. Usually the cardiac origin chest pain is central in location but what is classically described in the literature is that 
pain arising from lower jaw to the upper abdomen has to be considered cardiac in origin in a susceptible individual that is an individual with risk factors until proven otherwise the pain may be present on either side of chest and it may radiate to either side of the arms or it may even radiate to uh, jaws or neck the referral side in the patients who were previously having coronary artery disease which had been previously treated is usually same every time the patient has an obstructive coronary artery disease that is once you are stented and god forbid you develop some kind of restenosis in your stents or you develop some kind of recurrence of a blockages or you have progression of the residual blockages you had you will experience a similar kind of a referral of pain that you had previously what is classically described as cardiac origin chest pain is rarely below the umbilicus and rarely above the jaws at times we might confuse cardiac origin chest pain with acid peptic disease it can be confused with cervical spondylosis it can be confused with neck problems it can be confused with dental problems or even throat problems so there are certain factors which are associated with increase in intensity of pain what are these factors anything which is responsible or increase in blood pressure can increase the angina exercise can increase heart rate fever can increase heart rate and they might precipitate angina in a patient who had occlusive coronary artery disease exposure to cold weather exposure to extreme hot weather in certain cases food intake emotions or even dreams can cause angina at times rest pain may be present that is typical description may be present while the patient is lying down or just getting up from sleep or is doing minimal activity this type of chest pain suggests that the patient has got acute coronary syndrome or a heart attack and it has to be taken very seriously sometimes pain may not be there at all patients who are having diabetes elderly patients patients who are on beta blockers or patients who have under general anesthesia might not experience chest pain patients who present to us with acute left ventricular failure usually have predominant dyspnea or breathlessness and chest pain may not be the presenting features in these patients it is said that around one fourth of the people who experience heart attack may have silent mi or silent myocardial infarction chest pain which is of cardiac origin is usually accompanied by certain symptoms and these usually are either breathlessness when breathlessness is present it usually indicates that large area of heart muscle is involved and patient is at high risk there can be sometimes syncope or transient loss of consciousness presence of transient loss of consciousness indicates that patient either has some conduction abnormality or is having some life threatening rhythm disturbances or is having severe blockages in the main artery of the left side that is the left main coronary artery or the patient has already suffered some mechanical complication of the heart attack sometimes there can be features of increased sympathetic stimulation what are these features of increased sympathetic stimulation patient might have anxiety might have restlessness might have palpitations or tachycardia patients may have sweating or they can present with hypertension or increased blood pressure at times there can be manifestation of parasympathetic axis in these patients there can be hypotension that is the blood pressure is on the lower side there can be bradycardia that is the heart rate is on the lower side they can uh, feeling of persistent fatigue or weakness at times there can be nausea and vomiting the message of this talk is the same any kind of chest pain you have got it needs workup it needs evaluation and it has to be taken very seriously we'll talk about some other issues in the management of heart diseases or the coronary artery disease and other heart diseases in the forthcoming episodes until then bye